Is hydraulic condensation using bioceramic cements a single cone technique? This is the topic of this week's Friday question. Bioceramic sealer has now been around for nearly nine years, and while the obturation technique developed by Rewold Endo to optimize and to implement the sealer's use responsibly has now gained widespread popularity, I still get the occasional question of, is this a single cone technique, and how about filling in 3D or three dimensions, and what about the lateral canals? Well, many people don't seem to understand the concept of hydraulic condensation and why it works the way it does. So in this video, I hope to basically clarify some of these questions and confusions for you. First, I think that we need to revisit and look historically at the obturation techniques and for a minute and just kind of get a little clarification about the term single cone. The term dates all the way back to the 1950s and 60s when we had to use a single cone of an O2 tapered uh, gutta percha cone in a variably tapered canal that was instrumented using hand files and gaze glittens, and then we had to use zinc oxide eugenol cement uh, to fill the large gaps that presented. Predictably, this technique failed because of the O2 taper gutta percha cone in a variably tapered preparation that left a lot of space around the cone that then needed to be filled with this sealer, and using zinc oxide eugenol as a sealer means getting dramatic shrinkage upon setting. Furthermore, uh, zinc oxide eugenol resorbs both from outside as well as the inside of the root canal in areas where it pools, leaving large gaps uh, down the line. So as a result of these two specific limitations of zinc oxide eugenol cement, the single cone technique failed and the profession developed the axiom of minimizing the sealer interface, uh, which uh, meant that we really had to condense gutta percha or thermoplasticize it, and the term single cone became associated with a lower quality obturation. So the profession moved on to using lateral condensation and vertical condensation to compensate for these limitations of uh, the sealer that we were using, namely zinc oxide eugenol. Now, 10 years ago, when bioceramics finally became available as a sealer, and the properties seemed to be much better than both zinc oxide eugenol as well as the resin-based sealers, we here at Rewild Endo decided to revisit the old concept of single cone and see how it works with this specific sealer. So we understood why the original single cone didn't work, which was really because of the limitations of the sealer that was being used at the time and the lack of cone matching at that time. So we developed a constant tapered preparation to facilitate cone matching and then used the bioceramics to fill the gap that invariably exists in canal irregularities and ovalities. So in this version, the bioceramic doesn't really act as a sealer. It really acts as a root canal filler. In reality, the gutta percha is merely a carrier, as well as a path for retreatment in case it's needed down the line. So in hydraulic condensation, the sealer is what really seals the root canal. It's not the gutta percha. So for those proponents of thermoplastic gutta percha and thermoplastic carriers, what we need to have them answer is the following question. What's really so special about gutta percha? And what material should really fill and seal the spaces around the main carrier cone? Should it be thermoplastic gutta percha, or uh, will the bioceramic sealer do? So, of course, lots of scientific support is present to support the superiority of bioceramics over gutta percha. In fact, uh, there are five major advantages to bioceramic sealer and cements compared to thermoplastic gutta percha. For example, bioceramic sealer does not shrink, but thermoplastic gutta percha shrinks 2 to 7% upon cooling. Bioceramic sealer is antimicrobial to, the, to its high pH, but thermoplastic gutta percha is not, it's inert. Bioceramic sealer bonds to dentin, but thermoplastic gutta percha doesn't bond. Bioceramic sealer has better uh, flow properties than thermoplastic gutta percha. It doesn't get hard very quickly upon cooling. And bioceramic sealer is hydrophilic. And last, the bioceramic sealer technique hydraulic condensation is a lot easier clinically and much more efficient to implement than any of these lateral and vertical condensation techniques. So based on these characteristics, it's much better to fill the canal with bioceramic sealer 
than it is to use gutta percha. So, in fact, there's really no reason to use thermoplastic gutta percha anymore since the problem that led to the development of thermoplastic gutta percha, which was the lack of quality sealers, has now been resolved. So, it actually brings up the following question. Why use gutta percha at all? Well, Ribaldendo uses a responsible technique, I mean, this hydraulic condensation technique, which means that the root canal should have a chance to be retreated. And this is why hydraulic condensation was developed with the main cone of gutta percha as the main filler. So the gutta percha is used because it has really two functions only. It acts as a carrier to take the sealer to the full working length, that therefore it gives you some length control, and it also acts as a path for retreatment. That's all. And we believe that, import, uh, that a tooth has to be retreatable because we know that cases fail not so much because of the obturation technique that you use, but because of your ability to, or inability to completely clean and disinfect the root canal. So if you focus on cleaning and disinfecting the root canal completely, vast majority of cases succeed, but we want to make sure that we present and share a technique that is retreatable so that if someone with less experience were to do a root canal and wouldn't be able to completely clean the root canal, an endodontist or someone with more experience would still be able to retreat it. And hydraulic condensation is retreatable uh, without a doubt. So this new era of obturation is really only possible as a result of bioceramic sealer that allows bonding to dentin as well as the uh, treated gutta purchase surfaces. So dimensional stability and not washing out of the root canal are major factors here in making this technique work. Going back to our original question, is hydraulic condensation really a single cone technique? Well, yes and no. You may use only one gutta percha cone to fill the canal, but it really has nothing to do with the traditional single cone uh, technique because it uses cone matching now and it's entirely different uh, cement to fill in the gaps between the root canal. I hope this answers your question, and for the meantime, for Rewildendo, I'm Ali Nese, and I hope you found this information helpful.